Hey guys, we are looking at two geometric sequences and we want to figure out the recursive and explicit formulas for each of them. Okay. As you're working on these, you're going to hear some different terminology, arithmetic recursive, arithmetic explicit, geometric recursive, and geometric explicit. In this video, we are working on these two. If you need the other ones, I'll link a playlist for you in the corner where I've got a bunch of videos. All right. So the purpose of the recursive and explicit formulas is to find more numbers in this these sequences. So this dot, dot, dot means that this sequence continues on. It doesn't just stop. And these formulas help us find more numbers in the sequence. You know, if just if you wanted to, because who doesn't want to know more, know more of these numbers? All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out the pattern. These are a sequence because there's something happening to these numbers. They're not just randomly listed. So when I look at this, I recognize that we are multiplying by a negative two each time. That's how we get the next number in the sequence. So great, right? How do we figure out these formulas? Well, we need to go over just a little bit of terminology and then it falls together pretty quickly. So when you're working with these, you're going to see a lot of A's and a lot of N's. The N refers to the place it is in line, basically the place in the sequence. So N equals one is the first number in the sequence. N equals three is the third number in the sequence and on it goes, right? When you see A with a little number like this, a little subscript, A sub one, that's talking about the value of that number. Okay. So a sub one in this case is negative four. You're also going to see A sub N quite frequently. What that is saying is plug in whatever number you want for N to find that in the sequence. So if I had A sub 100, I'm looking for the 100th term. Okay. As we write our formulas, we're going to leave a lot of things as A sub N so people can plug in what they want. Okay. So now that we know that, I want us to pretend for a second that we are trying to find the next term in this sequence, the fifth term, or we could also call it a sub five. Well, if I just follow this pattern, I figured out, I'm just going to multiply by another negative two to get negative 64. Okay, great. But how do I tell someone else to do that? What did I just do? To find the fifth term, I took the one before it, the fourth term, right? And I multiplied by a negative two. So if this were an English class, right? I could just write that out in my lovely handwriting. To find the next number in the sequence, take the one before it and multiply it by negative two. And your English teacher would be like, good job. Your math teacher would be like, um, that's not correct. So how do we do it in math language? Well, I'm going to show you, okay? First of all, we're gonna write it like we found this guy. So to find this, to find a sub five, what did we do? That was equal to the one before it, which we could call a sub four. And what did we do? We multiplied by negative two. That's what we did, right? But we don't want to give people a formula that'll just help them find the fifth term. We want them to be able to find any term they want. So how do we kind of generalize it? Well, this is how we do it. We say a sub n, which means whatever number you want to find. You plug in whatever number for n. If you want to find the 10th number in the sequence, plug in 10 or whatever you want to find. That is equal to the number before it. But how do we write that in math language? We write it as a sub n minus one. That's another way of saying the number before it. Because isn't four just five minus one? Yeah, so if I want to find the tenth, I need the ninth, ten minus one, okay? And then what do I do to that number? I multiply it by a negative two. And guess what, friends? That is my recursive formula. Now, in order for this to be helpful for anybody trying to use it, I need to list what the first number in this sequence is, which in this case, it is negative four. 
So I just make a little note that says a sub one, the first number in the sequence is negative four. Okay, so you could find any number in that sequence. But you might have noticed recursive formulas are a bit limited because you have to know the number before. If I wanted to find the hundredth term in a sequence, I have to know the 99th, right? So it can help us, but stick around for explicit formulas. You're going to like those, okay? First, we're going to do this recursive, and then we will move on to the explicit formulas, okay? All right. So when I look at these, I'm trying to figure out how they're related to each other. And I figure out that we are dividing by four each time. Now, when we are working with sequences and these formulas, a lot of times, instead of thinking of division, we like to think of it as multiplying by a fraction, which is really the same thing. So we could also think of this as multiplying by one fourth. It's the same thing, just as we're writing these equations, these formulas, it's a little bit easier to think of it as multiplying by a fraction, all right? Okay, so if I were looking for the next term, what would I do? I would take the one before and divide by four or multiply by one fourth, right? So how do I write that in math language? I say whatever number you want to find, a sub n, Take the one before it, but in math terms we say a sub n minus 1, and we multiply by 1 fourth. Look at that. Oh, I kind of cut off that one, but I think you can still tell it's a 1. <laughs> and then remember, for this to be helpful, we need to let people know what the first number in this sequence is. And in this one, a sub 1 is equal to 512. Yay! Okay, nothing against recursive formulas, but explicit formulas are my favorite. Why are they called explicit formulas? I don't know, but I'm not going to say any bad words. All right, explicit formulas are so cool because, let me tell you why. You can just be like, I want to know the 500th term. You plug in 500 for n and you get it. And you don't have to know the term before. All right. Does this sound crazy? We're going to talk about it. All right. I'm going to show you a formula that we are going to fill in for this. But I don't want you just to memorize it. We're going to talk about why it works. So we're not just memorizing it. Okay. But here we go. This is our geometric explicit formula. Now, when I fill this in, the n's are going to stay n's because that's the number people fill in for whatever term they want to find, right? We are going to fill in numbers for a sub 1 and r. So for my explicit formula, we are saying whatever number you want to find, or a sub n, that is equal to the first number in the sequence, a sub 1, which in this case is negative 4. And then we are multiplying by r. r stands for the common ratio or what we're multiplying by each time. So we are multiplying by negative 2. That's what we figured out. We're multiplying by negative 2 each time. Now, if I just left it like this, well, that gives me the next term. But what about all the rest of them? Well, that's where this exponent comes in, n minus 1. Now, I want you to think about why this is n minus 1. When we found the fifth term in our sequence, how many times did we multiply by negative 2? Well, we can count it. 1, 2, 3, 4. When I wanted the fifth term, I multiplied by negative 2 four times, one less time. Okay, so that means if I want to find the hundredth term, I'm going to multiply by negative 2 99 times. So that's why it's n minus 1. Oh my gosh, does that make sense? That's the formula right there, you guys. So basically what this is saying is whatever number you want to find, you want to find the hundredth term, well, u times negative 4 by negative 2, 100 minus 1, 99 times. Isn't that cool? And you don't have to know the one before it. You just need to know that one. All right, you might say, do I need to list the first number? You don't have to because it's built in. It's right there. 
Okay. All right. Let's figure out the explicit formula for this guy. Oh, I took this away. Here it is. I'm kind of covering that up. Can we see it if I put it down here? Yes, we can. Okay. So for this guy, whatever number you want to find, a sub n, take the first term in your sequence, which in this one, it's 512. And multiply by the common ratio. See, this is kind of why we like to think of it as multiplying by a fraction instead of dividing, even though it's really the same thing. So we're multiplying by one fourth to the n minus one power. That is my explicit formula. So anyone could use this, plug in whatever place they want to for n and figure out that number in the sequence. All right, I hope this made sense. I'm gonna link that playlist I talked about earlier if you need some more examples, thanks.